Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Celebrating Act 2. As you can see, Art and I are preparing for something very special. Art, we've got a special guest. Do we ever? Uh, this is a, a friend of ours, and a, when I say ours, of the Celebrating Act 2 audience. Uh, she's yep. one of our regulars. But what's really special is that she has now published her first book, Available As Is. And that's not a clue because nobody will know who our guest is until we introduce her. But she's known to our world as the hungover widow, Debbie Weiss. Here she is, Debbie Weiss. Yay! Hi. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Hi, Debbie. How's it feel to be a first time author? It feels good. You put so much time into writing the book, it's nice when it all kind of comes together and it's in one neat package. Yeah. Before we get into yeah. the book itself, uh, uh, in several of the uh, conversations we've had previously with Debbie, she was talking that uh, after she became a widow at a relatively young age with her long-term sweetheart from, I think it was high school, uh, George, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Uh, she, uh, although she is a licensed attorney, uh, that's not something she wanted to continue to pursue. She always wanted to be a writer. And darn it, she went and she, among other things, uh, went to uh, school and uh, took a course in writing. Uh, uh, you got a degree in that, did you not, Debbie? I did. I got an um, MFA, um, Master's of Fine Arts in Creative Writing from St. Mary's College of California in uh, May of 2020. Well, right. all I can say, Debbie, is is it takes a, a lawyer to actually go back to school to get an MFA to write something instead of just sitting down with a pen in your hand and spelling it all out on paper. I like the structure. <laughs> now, the, the uh, you've been doing uh, the Hungover Widow videos. I call them um, commentaries. But they're, they're videos. You've been doing them for Celebrating Act Two for, I don't know, a year or so. And they're, they're all a lot of fun, by the way. But they're all kind of advice columns to middle-aged daters. And if you're a male, you'd be smart to listen to them, by the way, guys. <laughs> um, but what's different about... And, and, and after a year, why did you write the book? I guess what's different about the book from what we see um, on... C of you and your advice on celebrating act two. Did I say that so that it made sense? <laughs> I think I understand. <laughs> For one thing, um, you know, I finished this book uh, in probably in 2020. I finished it a couple. I finished it a couple years ago, and it spans a very different time. It spans about a year after I was widowed when I started to date again to about three years after that. So we're looking at my first four years of widowhood. Um, whereas what you're seeing now is just, uh, these are, this is my advice from after eight years out, eight years after losing my spouse. I've been in a long-term relationship for four years. I, I no longer date, thank heavens. And so it's, it's a very different perspective from someone who's newly widowed to someone who's far, far, much further along, I would say, in, the, in recovering. Um, <laughs> And then the book is also just a very different style. When I talk or, or write essays or advice, uh, the book reads more like fiction. It's memoir, it's my experiences, but it has dialogue and places and people, and it is not a self-help book. It's it's a memoir. Yeah, well, you've, your personal story is really not uncommon. Women get you know, widowed all the time, unfortunately. Um, but it is unique in the sense that you're a unique person and you've got a great sense of humor um, and you have a, a wonderful outlook on life. Um, so I, uh, I, and of course it's a very tragic story really on, on one level, but I imagine it's not all tragedy. The, the book really covers a gut, a, a, a wide swath of emotions that you went through. That's true. It does. Um... It also talks a bit, I lost my mother when I was 10, so that I had an interesting kind of upbringing. My dad, uh, I have an only child, so I grew up with my dad. He's a nuclear physicist and quite eccentric. So that probably made me a fairly warped individual. And um, the book kind of goes 
through that and then what it was like when I was then almost 50 and then I lost my husband and there was a second great loss. But it was from the perspective of someone who had already ex had a great loss in their life. You know, I called it the rule of impending disaster. You know, after my mom died, I realized anybody could vanish at any second, which, you know, probably isn't the best thing for a 10 year old to think about a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a, a journey that unfortunately a lot of people go through. Um, and I just knowing how you write and, and the way you do your, um, uh, videos for us, I, I think it's going to be a wonderful book. Yeah, yeah and, and also what, what's uh, different about this is that uh, you didn't call it The Hungover Widow, the fancy title, or something about widowhood or something like that. And you actually available as is, as part of a uh, an exploration of who you would become. Can you tell us a little bit more about how that uh, flavor of the name uh, was influenced by the content of the book. Oh, very much. I think that, you know, us older singles, we are available as is, you know, like an older home with character, right? We have our quirks, we have our foibles. And also, folks at midlife, they're not going to change a tremendous amount, and they already have a lot of their lives in place, you know, kids, uh, parents who need care, whatever educations we've had, the places we've lived, you know, uh, when my husband died, I'd lived in the same home for 31 years and in the same town since I was six. So available as is, it refers to the state of, of how we are as we get older. We are available as is, like a fine home. <laughs> uh, we, everybody needs to know, I think, and knowing you, Everybody needs to know that we are available as is. Not everybody recognizes that's that's part of your journey, I think, is it not? It was. I mean, part of it definitely was the sense of reinvention. You know, my husband died. Um, we were very isolated. We were both introverts. He was a software engineer. I'm, I'm, I am still a bookworm. Um, my idea of enjoyment is, you know, on the couch with a book. And when he died, I was very, very much alone, and I had to reinvent myself. But I was also a very cautious person. You know, I think people look at stories of reinvention after loss, like something like Eat, Pray, Love, where Elizabeth Gilbert just goes off forever. And she's, you know, in India at an ashram and, and you know, takes up residence in Italy. But for, for us more cautious people, the steps towards recovery, towards change are, are much smaller. They're more discreet, um, probably less expensive. And... Um, I wanted to cover some of that, of what it's like to reinvent yourself and what it's like to look for connection as an adult and as a cautious, rather anxious person. So, you know, it's well, kind I... of interesting that um, uh, uh, this book spans two uh, losses uh, in your life, one when you were very young and one as you were older, uh, when your husband died, your mom when you were young and George as you uh, were older. And so I think that a lot of people are going to be able to relate with one or the other and perhaps both. And to me, this makes it a very unique book. You're a great um, storyteller, if you will, uh, as we found for the last year and a half speaking with you. And uh, anybody who reads your, your, your work, uh, any place that it exists, understands that you bring a lot of background into that conversation. So. It really is a unique piece, and uh, uh, can people actually uh, uh, order this now? Where is it available? It, well, thank you for asking. The book is available to pre-order. So on Amazon, you can pre-order it. The book does not actually come out until September 12th. That is the date that you can get a copy, that it should be in bookstores. Um, you know, I know a lot of people prefer to support indie bookstores instead of Amazon. But it is available on Amazon um, now to pre-order. Okay. Um, September 12th, uh, uh, 2022. Yes. Because um, after all, these videos last forever. Um, I, yep. I know it's going to be a very poignant story. And I'm really looking forward to it. It's uh, completely different from what you tell us of than your uh, videos that you're doing for Celebrating Act Two. 
And um, it's obviously a very personal story. Uh, it sounds wonderful. Let me read, by the way, a preview, review from Kirkus Reviews of your book. So hang in there. Uh, Kirkus Reviews says, this is a deeply personal story, but one that Weiss shares with a beguiling openness and wit. That sounds yeah. like you. <laughs> a sharply written, heartfelt dating account that proves both enriching and amusing. Well, that sounds like Debbie Weiss to me. <laughs> Can I I'm looking my... forward to seeing the book. Oh, she's Thank getting you. the book. Hold it up. Yes. I'm going to hold this up right Wait, now. Let me, get, get, let me get a, a full frame shot. Yeah. <laughs> Available really as up. is. What's the subtitle? A Midlife Widow's Search, Search for, for Love. love. That's great. Well, Debbie, congratulations on the book. And uh, I, we're definitely looking forward to reading it. I know it's going to be a big hit. You won't forget your friends when you become a New York Times bestselling author, will you? You'll be videoing all my appearances. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you again, Thanks Debbie, so for a wonderful conversation, as always. Uh, and all the best of luck with the book. And once it comes out, we'll have to have another thing uh, to hold your feet to the fire to make sure that you are now going to be so popular and unavailable that you'll still show up for these two little guys. Oh, I love doing this. These are, this is actually so much fun. And yes, I would love to come back when the book comes out so that, yes, please. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.